Hi guys, today we'll approach it a bit differently. Um, my setup to making videos is a bit archaic. I had to resort to taking pictures and we'll go through them. And we're going to discuss the sum of sample that I received from, from IT Studio. Last time we did the slam lamper, which was the module that goes in between the lamp. Now this is a module that you put in between your power cable. You have two two connections in, two connections out, and that's it. And other than that, it's functionally the same as the slamfer. But here you can't just plug and play. You really have to connect some wires to it. But what I was really interested in is having a look inside to see what is everything about. And I'm also going to look into the pricing strategy and see what it, the components cost and how much profit they might make from it. I've made higher resolution pictures of the front and the back side. I've mirrored the back side so we can really compare both sides and, and how the components map on top of each other. So let's have a look at the different components or the different areas yeah. on this PCB. First and foremost, because nothing else will work, the power. You see on top that there is a bridge rectifier, the square component, um, which rectifies the incoming alternating current into DC current. This means this is high voltage, this is around 300, 320 volts, and yeah, your microcontroller won't work at that voltage, so we'll have to bring it down. On the left side, you see the, the top side of the PCB, where you have a fuse, an input fuse, but this fuse is only used for the output load, if I'm not mistaken, and not for the circuit itself. Um, there is some big capacitance to um, to make to flatten out the DC current, but we also see in the bottom that there is a little coil, which is going to be doing all the switching work. So we have a switching regulator that is going to bring down the voltage to an acceptable one, which I'm guessing, but I didn't measure, it will be around 12 volts. The capacitor in the bottom is rated for 16 volts, so 12 volts could be a possible one. Also many relays switch at 12 volts and the receiver, the RF receiver, is also functioning better at 12 volts. It gets more juice, so its range will be better. Um, I'm not going to go into much more detail, but you will have some ICs on there that do magic switching for you. A transistor to switch, uh, flyback, diode, and all the usual stuff. Uh, next up, which is one of the interesting parts of this product, this is the uh, area where all the Wi-Fi happens, and it's done by the ESP8266. Of course it is. If you want to bring down your product to a price, this is really one of the, the, the biggest helps since, hmm, when did they come out? Last year somewhere? Um, so you see all the usual stuff, but the interesting thing is that this ESP82 is implemented again on their PCB. Um, many of the PCBs are nowadays available for less than $2 a piece, but I'm guessing that making another PCB would bring up the cost too much. And apparently they still had some room free, so why not do it yourself? The only strange thing is the, the antenna. I don't know what they did there. If I look at other antennas and other PCBs, um, they they look much straighter, they have less curves, so it's a bit strange. So in the bottom you really see that the diameter changes, which might not be that abnormal, but then suddenly the distance there changes. So antenna design is, is a course on its own, not my speciality at all, but it looked a bit strange. One of the very interesting things from a hacker point of view is that there is also the programming header, so it's usually just a serial connection. So if you somewhere have some uh, some UART modules available, you should be able to program this. They didn't label which one is the 5 volts and or 3.3 volt. I'm I'm guessing it's going to be 3.3 because from the power regulator. You have to go down to 3.3 volts for the expressive um, chip. 
and that's probably going to come from a linear regulator which you see a little bit above the programming header um, so and on the side we also see the the big power lines going to transfer the current for the load um, and these of course are interrupted by the relay that you have on top and this relay is simply switched by the espressive which is the main microcontroller running everything probably through a, through a transistor I didn't look for which one it was exactly but probably one of them maybe in the power area so they even they even did the effort of uh, making some gaps in the PCB so to really make sure that, that no sparks can cross from one side to the other it seems not that thick for 10 amps on the right side you have the transfer trace going all the way from the top to the bottom so this one is not interrupted and then in between you see the one that is interrupted the one that is not interrupted is pierced with vias all the way so this means that both on the top and the bottom side you have the same trace which makes it reasonably thick just the one in the center doesn't seem to be having any top layer no it doesn't so my my theory about trace widths is also a bit limited but i would not try to try out the limits the the relay says that it can handle 10 amps at 250 volts so let's see if that's true but I'd, for the safe to be on the safe side I'd, I'd stick with a bit less um what else do we have on this pcb of course 433 megahertz module this is only a, a receiver you can also buy the transmitters but for this case they're just in the, the remote controls this is only a receiver um and this apparently is a one of the blocks that they just buy off the shelf I guess they make them in such quantities that it's cheaper to just buy one and solder them than to re-implement it on the PCB also if you would have to re-implement a 1 by 3 centimeter PCB somewhere on the main green board I think you might be a bit unlucky when it comes down to component size but yeah Probably this is cheaper, so that's what they went for. Also, you need in any case an antenna that's not on PCB, so there is always some mounting to be done. And actually, not that much is left, so what do we still have? The button, an LED, and the flash memory for the Espressif. The Espressif usually loads everything from flash memory, and the flash memory is a super Chinese brand. I looked it up and yeah, it's difficult to read the numbers, but you can yeah you can figure it out. And then there is this little chip next to the flash chip, which I'm unsure about what it does. It's connected to the 433 megahertz receiver, but yeah, I'm not sure what what functionality of it is. And the numbers are so small that I really cannot read it. So in a nutshell, this is what's on the PCB. And having access to the programming header really makes it quite interesting because it means you can put your own software on it. I've asked IT if they would release their code open source, but sadly they said no. What would be interesting though is that you can have um, a recovery version of, of the firmware so that you can always place back the previous version. Um, otherwise you can pretty much just flash this thing as if it's any of the expressive target boards. There might be the tiny issue of having to reset it in a way, which is always a bit tricky with these devices. Um, but I'm sure it's it's not that hard. So a good one, and actually a really cheap one for hacking stuff together, but also for home automation. Um, just one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to put your house full with these things, these boards do consume something and the, the, the board itself does get quite warm. The Espressive is a power hungry chip um, if you don't put it into sleep mode. And that's why it even needs a supply of around 1 amps to be able to deliver everything the board needs. 
which really is quite a lot if you're consuming this constantly at what in this case because it's a linear regulator would be at 12 volts that's 12 watt yeah let's say it doesn't do that but still 200 milliamps or 100 milliamps is still a lot so that's still 1.2 watts of idle idle power and if you do that for 10 devices in your house that's 12 watts constantly for them having to do nothing but anyway let's have a look at the power consumption so on top the non early backer offer for four sonoffs and a controller this is 22 dollars i just split the price of the controller over the four ones and that brings you down to 5.5 dollars a piece I was then scrolling on the internet and I bumped into another Chinese product which really looked very similar, like literally the same. And it's um, an RF controlled wireless switch, which is what Sonoff does too, but with the difference that it doesn't have Wi-Fi. So I went to look at that and they sell these things for like $5.5 a piece. Hmm, the same. And then on top of that you would have to put the Aspersif in there which you can buy nowadays for like 1.8 dollars a piece but yeah since it's implemented on the pcb you can get rid of the pcb connectors certain other things but mainly the components are still there so i'm guessing that production price for this product will be hmm, somewhere four four dollars bottom one um that means that they have about one dollar or maybe one and a half dollar of profit on each of these devices which is really not a lot but it means that these devices are incredibly cheap and they seem to be designed quite well just the only thing yes perceived being power hungry is not the best solution and also i didn't test the range yet but even in my apartment here even in the bedroom i don't get proper wi-fi signal on my laptop um, I'm pretty sure that it would not be any better with the Aspersif, even it would be worse. So yeah, to make really a full home automation uh, project happen in your apartment or house, it could be useful to put these devices in some kind of a mesh network so that they can connect to each other and that they then extend the range of your, of your home network and then just try to make them sleep as much as possible. And lastly, just a quick look at their Indiegogo page. It's not going super well. They've uh, been stuck around the 2000 mark for around a week now. And I'm unsure if they will be able to finish it. I do think these are interesting products. And especially for this price point, you can really do a lot with them. I would even like to use these devices for, for something more. Like making my own mesh network that allows... Uh, 433 megahertz devices to to send messages over the internet yeah that that's a different id from what they have i guess have a look at their indiegogo page check it out and see if you like it yeah i might be back with another post about these or something else we'll see vlogging is fun so ciao